Okay, welcome back. I'm Mr. Sean, welcome to my channel. And this is Love at First Sight. A cute little Cyclops. We have just given her a few books over the weekend. A few too many manga books. Um, we had to go to her house, drop them off because it was so heavy. Um, but Mamoru, being a good guy, walked her all the way home with the books and met her aunt Mayumi. And he's trying to find out more. He's trying to figure things out. What's going on with this girl? So let's see what he does now. On the days we don't have school, I usually go hang out with Tomo and Akemi. Today, though, it seems Akemi's busy. So instead, I'm at Tomo's house browsing through his books. Tomo has a minor collection of pretty interesting manga and novels. And it's not too unusual that we hang, hang out in his room every now and then. Is Akemi still doing things with her club? Ballet club, right? Ballet? No, she's at a birthday party for some third year student, she knows. Man, she's got some big network of friends. It's because she's both adventurous and kind hearted. She does have a, that kind of personality, but she's also pretty. And she's good at studying in sports. <clears throat> That's probably what makes her popular. Probably. Isn't she bothered by that? If she is, I've never heard her say so. As usual, he doesn't go into detail. The fact that he only replies with such a non-committal answer is aggravating. So I try not to probe for more. Aren't you two going out? What's that supposed to mean? A lot. No, no, no. I'm not mocking you or anything. The way you two are so close, I honestly thought you were going out at first. You just known each other for a very long time. Do you want to? Who cares? Anyway, what about you? Avoiding the subject. It looks like you got a crush of your own. It's pretty unusual for Tomo to change the topic so funny like that. Pointing that out might be bad though, so I'll let it slide. How can you think I have a crush on Akemi? No, not her. Don't you have a thing for that one-eyed girl in the first year classes that you're trying so hard to become friends with? You mean Sachi? Indeed. Getting close to that girl with no friends who's bullied at school? If you're not doing it out of Akemi levels of kindness, of random kindness, poking your nose into that girl's business is only going to cause trouble. What are you trying to achieve? You have a crush on her or something? That's... I... No? I don't think of it. I never considered why I wanted to get closer to her so, so badly. Maybe I just got involved because I pitied her, like Tomo said, rather than out of kindness in my heart. I guess you don't even know yourself. Feeling an ease with silence I created between us, I burned out the first thing that came to my mind. You're probably right. I suppose there wasn't any dancer like that, though. So anyway, what's going on with her? Oh, I ended up walking back to her house with her so I could give her the manga all at once. To her house. That's pretty... daring. I thought I'd tell him about the time I had spent with Sasha so far. Even though I was a little hesitant when I started, as I go on telling such a story, I reflect on it all and realize I actually have been having a good time. It's not like we did anything special or fun, but I have enjoyed talking with her. Still, am I really doing this because I have some kind of crush on her? I feel it's not an easy, answer, easy question to answer, so I tried to shake it off my mind, but it's not like I need an answer right now anyway. Pretty true, I mean... That's something you definitely gotta figure out if you're doing something out of curiosity or you're trying to help the person. Or maybe he is in love with her. Monday, the beginning of a school week, I normally have to drag myself out of the house. I, I, my brain heavy with gloom and drowsiness. But today, I'm feeling a little different as I walk down the street. Usually I make a beeline towards school, but instead, I'm straying from my normal path to take another street nearby. Yeah. It's not like it's a big loss of time, but since it's the fastest way to school, is to go straight ahead from my house, I don't normally use this road. Of course, it's not like I'm choosing to go this way for no reason. I can go faster if I take the streets without many people on them. And of course, even if it's unlucky, unlikely, I thought that I, if I go this way, I might. As I walk on, I see a figure ahead of me. The torn uniform, messy hair, and slim build, and of course, the bandages on her head. No mistaking who it is in front of me. Sachi. I speed up to catch her and nudge her shoulder. Hey, morning. Sachi turns towards me with a startled look on her face, not that from her sudden appearance. 
from my side of the bridge. I guess I should have expected that kind of reaction. Well, duh! Ah, Mama Nusepai, why are you here? Yeah, sorry for sneaking up on you. My house is right near here. I mentioned that earlier, earlier didn't I? The route I normally take is just one street over. Oh, oh, oh really? Yep, I took the street hoping to not see you. I didn't think I'd actually fool it, though. Do you mind if I walk with you to school? No. It doesn't really show in her expression, but I think I hear a little excitement in her voice. Might be my imagination, though. How was your weekend? Did you read some of the manga I lent you? And a little smile crept up on her face. Oh, yes. I've already finished parts of, of the two series of them. Both of them were really good. Her tone is uncharacteristically lively. She's wearing a cheerful expression I've never seen until now, but her good mood is kind of rubs off on me, too. I'm glad then. I thought I should return the I thought that I should return the books I'm already finished with, so I bought them with me today. I said you could take your time, didn't I? Uh, are you sure? Of course. What should I give you next? Well actually, which of those did you like best? Um both were good, but I like this one the best. The one with the boy who could see ghosts. As we continue walking through walking and talking about the manga contest, the school comes into view. Sachi has been fairly talking to on the way here, holding an actual conversation with me. Carrying all that manga from her, for her, was definitely worth it if it makes her that happy. We're already here, huh? I usually walk to school alone, but this is more fun. Yeah. While we were walking, she was still keeping her eye out for people, but I noticed that she was mostly focusing on me as we entered the school where there are many more prying eyes. However, she starts keeping her head down and walking on the side of the path to try to stay out of the light. Isn't there at least some way I can help her feel more comfortable? If I have more if I have time, I think I'll go I think I'll take the same treat again today. If we're lucky, maybe we can go home together again, as long as you don't mind that. I, I don't mind her anything. I like being able to walk with you, Senpai. Really? I'm glad to hear it. Oh, I need to change my shoes. One sec. Alright, you too. Uh, looking ahead, Sachi suddenly slows her pace and hides behind me as much as she can. While she's trying to just, like she's trying to disappear, I shift my gaze in the direction she was looking and see a lone girl passing in front of a first year shoe rack. Blonde hair, seriously? Her hair is dyed blonde. Dyed blonde, at least. And she's wearing a shortened skirt. Even though we're away from her, I can see the sour look on her face. Wait, is that the Sadokawa girl? I ask quietly as I look over my shoulder while she's trying to keep Sachi hidden. You know her? No, I've only heard rumors about her. As I'm working on how to talk about this with Sachi, the bell rings. The girl who I'm pretty sure is Sadokawa hears it and heads to her class. It's a good thing we weren't in a hurry. We just really missed her as it is. It looks like she's already gone, Sachi. You need to get going too, don't you? Sachi probably doesn't want to continue this line of conversation. I make sure Sadokawa is definitely gone and I'll sigh of relief not to Sachi. Oh, yeah, right. Let me join you for lunch again. See you later. Okay, see you. So that was the infamous Sadokawa Rui. Huh? Since I never actually talked to her, I can't say for sure, but I can't tell just from looking at her that she has an aggressive personality. Making friends with Sachi is good and all, but I probably should find out what I can about Sadokawa as well. More classes are over, and it's lunchtime. However, it's only Tomo and me in the other classroom today. I found out asking Tomo about Sadakawa based on based on how scared Sachi was just from seeing her. There's no doubt in my mind that Sadakawa is the one bullying her. Wait, where's it getting? She has some business in the faculty room. She should be here soon. I see, perfect. Before she gets here, there's something I want to ask you. Mm, what's up? Well first, I, if we only have until after he gets back, I probably won't be able to get into detail about much. I wanted to know about the girl you mentioned before, the first year student, Sadokawa. As, as soon as we started talking about her, Kemi got really quiet, so I figured it'd be better to ask when she's not around. You said you met her in the past? That's what you want, huh? Well, it's not like it's a secret, I suppose. We met her two years ago when Kemi and I were in our last year of middle school. Sadokawa transferred her into our school. Since we were in different grades, we didn't meet her right away, but even back then, she seemed like a violent person, and we were soon made their way to us. Well, that's never a good sign. 
So Akemi, with her motto at the time being, love and peace, went and tried to rehabilitate her. Oh, great! Somehow I'm not surprised. Well, I didn't say that she succeeded. Sadako made fun of her mercilessly. But even still, Akemi refused to give up. I feel so damn stubborn. It finally ended with the two guys in a nasty fight. No one tried to stop him? Well, I rushed to intervene, but it's not like Akemi just stood there and took Sadokawa's blows. It looked like Akemi lost her cool, and she fought Sadokawa with everything she had. That was not something I was expecting from her. What happened to her? It was not just a simple squabble. Akemi always has good reflexes, and Sadokawa seemed to have had a lot of experience in fights. They kicked, they punched, and naturally they started using their knees and elbows. I had to stop them. God dang! I never would have guessed that Kemi would be able to fight. I even I didn't know she would. I know her for a long time. I saw a side of her I never knew existed that day. Is that a call saying anything to make Kemi so angry? Really? I, I think, <laughs> these guys, oh we we've met we, we know of her. Uh, that's sort of like, okay. Storytelling is, storytelling is a little off here. Uh, when they sort of know her, but they actually had a fight with her, that's a totally different subject. So that's a, that's a, that's a knowing. That's that's knowing them. Her. Really, I think that when Sadakawa punched her the first time, she flipped the switch inside of Kenny. I guess when Kenny snapped, she really snapped. So after the fight, that Kenny became really depressed and was a totally different person for a while. I guess she didn't win. If I had to guess, I'd say that it wasn't because she lost. Rather, I think that fact that she couldn't change Sadokawa came as a huge shock to her. What do you mean? Kami is a really good at becoming friends with people. You have noticed that, haven't you? Well, yeah. No matter how gloomy or rebellious a person is, or how different their interests are to Kami's, she can always find something to be friendly about. Sadokawa is not having any of that. After that day, whenever she got depressed, it was because she had come in contact with Sadakawa again. That's also surprising. Kemi always seems like the type to look forward no matter what. Well, the older Kemi was a real whip, at least. If she could try to make up with Sadakawa at some point, I think that might cheer her up. But those two are like oil and water. Can't force her to do that. No one can. Yeah, it's definitely not best to talk to Sadakawa in front of her, though. Unless she brings it up herself, then yeah, I think that's wise. At least until she has to change her heart. I think it can go find her own way to deal with it. You think so? Yeah, it seems like you might want to ask her around about Sadakawa and Sasha's relationship. If you want, I could try asking around, see what people say. Recent information about Sadakawa might be more useful to you than information about her past. Really? Yeah, that would be more. That would be useful information to have. I appreciate your help. I guess both of us are helping Sashi in our own way, even if Tomo is not directly involved. I know I can rely on him for this, especially since he has a lot more connections than I do. Now, Kemi and I will gather any of the lead here. Sadakawa doesn't seem to be as violent as she was before, but it doesn't seem like Sashi chan is asking for help either. Plus, I think Sadakawa is the only one bullying Sashi chan One victim and one no tormentor. That wouldn't stand out too much. Most of the students outside of their class probably don't know anything about it. There are students and teachers think that doubt they know the whole story. And if they suspect what's going on, they'll most likely turn the blind eye to it. Since no one wants to get involved in that. So in other words, as it stands, no one's going to lift a finger to help Sachi. Precisely. Well then, if no one else is involved in solving this, it shouldn't be too hard. However, the other students think of Sachi. I'm pretty sure they'll turn as blind an eye to you helping her as they have to Sadakawa viewing her. Probably true. If Sadakawa is the only one bullying her, ah, if Sadakawa is the only one bullying her, I think I should be able to get her to stop. That's assuming she doesn't have any friends on it with her, of course. You probably could, but that will go smoothly either way. So she has me, and I have you guys. We will definitely work something out. I hope so. Sorry, I'm weak, guys! Akemi calls out as she barges into the room, her loud voice disturbing the calm of the classroom. I'm starving! Wait, you haven't eaten yet! Could it be that you were waiting for me? Alright, I forgot about my lunch. So you weren't waiting for me then? Oh, <laughs> poor girl. What should I do? I take my time eating now. I won't have time to go to... Oh, 
Because that'd be sarcastic to me. <laughs> if I take my time eating now, I don't have time to go see Tachi. Why don't you eat over there? You don't get a friend with her, haven't you? But Akei just got here. I was late today, so you don't have to worry about it. Just worry. Just hurry up and introduce me to Sachan already. Fine, I get it. But thanks for everything, guys. Everything? Akemi has been part of our conversation, so now tilts her head in confusion. Yeah, everything. Anyway, I'm going. Hey! Oh, more senpai. Hello. Definitely looking cheerful. Good little girl. Since I didn't eat part of my lunch, I was able to meet Sachi a little earlier than last time. As I arrived, so I see something unexpected. At first, she was surprised to see me. But her surprise soon becomes joy as a smile begins to bloom on her face. Until now, she's always had a downcast look about her. Does that smile mean she's like hanging out with me? I didn't manage to eat lunch before I came. Do you mind if I eat here? I don't mind, it's, it's fine. And she's not stuttering either. Once again, I sit down and take the same place in the steps. Uh, Sachi, where's your lunch? Um, I already put away my lunchbox. For some reason, she looks away from me as she replies. Lunch break only started a little while ago, so it wouldn't be too strange if she was still eating when I got here, but I don't see her lunchbox anywhere. She is, however, holding up one of the manga I let her borrow and seems to have been rereading it. I start to feel a little uneasy. Even if she finished eating, she should still have her lunchbox around, at least. Where's the lunchbox? Oh, uh, that actually... I, I forgot my lunchbox today. Now I'm starting to understand. I'm also starting to understand that she's a terrible liar. Was it that Seller Cowboy girl? Huh? Why? He's saying bingo, but that's still a little early, I think. What happened? Um, well, wait for an answer, but then comes. It seems she just won't talk about it. You have to tell if you don't want to, but you haven't had anything for lunch, right? As I studied Sachi's triple face, I realized she thinks I'm blaming her. That'll make this harder to deal with. I can tell from Sachi's reaction to Sadakawa's name that whatever happened is definitely that girl's fault. Of course, even if she tells me that what, what happened, it's not like I can do anything about it right now. I should worry about what's going on in front of me. Yes. Um, no, but I'm really fine. I wasn't hungry anyway, and I usually don't eat that much in the first place. That's not really the issue, though. Can't you buy something at the cafeteria? I can leave you some money if you need it. You don't. It's fine, I'm okay, really. For once, Sachi has come, has some force in her voice. Since she's refusing to let me buy her lunch, she probably won't let me give her part of my own lunch either. All right. Oh, wait. I got my lunch. Do you want some of that? Uh, no, no, you don't really have to. I said it's fine. I don't eat much. I don't eat too much either. And besides, sitting here next to you and eating while you, you watch would be really rude, even if you don't want any food yourself. I'm in next to Sachi and open the lunchbox. For a moment, I worry that she's trying to avoid me like she did the first time I sat next to her. But she doesn't do anything like that. She just looks uneasy. Uh, are you sure? She still seems reluctant, but as she turns to face me, her stomach lets out a pitiful growl, and oh, she's blushing. A little bit. I know she's trying to be polite, but she really can't hide how hungry she is anymore. Just go that um. <laughs> she hangs her head, ashamed of her grumbling stomach. But she's still not ready to give in. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh. I know she's. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh. Come on, you're hungry, right? Hold on. Uh, wait, uh, say ah. Uh, Such so looks back and forth through my face, and the chopsticks at several seconds pass, but sure enough, she soon surrenders and opens her mouth. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. There. I stuff the piece of egg in her mouth, and she starts chewing, her eyes shut tight. Mmm, nom nom. Do you like it? Yeah. Great, next, open up. And <laughs> she, I don't think she likes the broccoli. I put the next bite. I gather between the chunks to her. That's enough. I don't want you to give, have less food because of me. It's really no big deal. Well, mm, she ate anyway, so. 
So I watch such you make me peck at the ends of my chopsticks. I start to feel like a mother bird feeding its chick or something. I can't help but think it's a little cute. And what's left, really? Open wide. <laughs> I feel like someone else is controlling my hand, but not that I'm about to stop it. You can at least let me eat by... <laughs> I'm sure this is embarrassing for her as I keep making her eat. I notice that her cheeks are getting redder and redder. She's so damn cute. I, I've already eaten half your lunch. The rest is yours. She finally says, staring down at her hands. Sure enough, only half of my lunch is left. I suppose so, you sure. You don't eat anymore. Just eat your lunch. Sachi so turns her flushed face away from me. Maybe I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think you already did it? You think? Uh, so, sorry, I got carried away. No, it's alright. I said that you fed me some of your lunch. I mean, I mean, not literally fed me. I mean, I was happy you shared your lunch with me. It's okay, I understand. I wasn't trying to be mean or anything. I know. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Of course, no problem. I suppose I'll keep up the rest. Um, hmm? As I'm about to start on what's left of my lunchbox, Sachi stares at the chopsticks. Oh! I should have realized that sooner, but the chopsticks I'm about to eat are the same ones I've had been using just a moment ago to put food directly into Sachi's mouth. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot. That would be kind of gross, wouldn't it? No, 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 I don't really mind, but if you think it's gross, it might be best to watch them. Don't worry about me, though. I don't know. I don't really care either, actually. If you're okay with me using them, I'm just going to go ahead and eat. So sure. This has gotten a little awkward. I eat my food and try not to think about food too much. Even though I'm trying to focus on eating, I keep catching myself stealing glasses at Sachi out of the corner of my eye. Sachi opens one of the mangas as to read it, but I notice that for some reason her eye stays fixed on me as I eat my lunch. Whenever I look over at her, her our eyes meet. Her cheeks are still red. Is she still embarrassed by me feeding her? Or is this another reason? Either way, it's getting really hard to focus on eating. I uh, imagine so. I imagine the movie. Okay, I'm done. As if I cue the bell rings, marking the end of lunchtime and the end of this episode. So let me say that this has been a intriguing episode. Uh, getting a little bit more into, into, into this. And <laughs> had a really cutesy fun time. Feeding the little Cyclops. She's a, she's a little a little doll, basically. Uh, well, she's a very she's a cutie. Uh, got a got a very interesting protagonist who definitely sees something wrong. He wants to pers try to help out the situation. Uh, he's trying to be he's trying to be thoughtful about it. I mean, he still has uh, he still doesn't think everything through, but at least he's giving it a try and he's being sincere about it. You know anything? So this is going really good. I hope. Hopefully things work out for the best. We'll see what thing that we'll see at the next time. But please leave a like, leave a comment below. Um, if you got any visual novels you'd like me to do read off in the future, please let me know in the comments as well. Subscribe to my channel for more continuations of this of Love at First Sight. For other uh, unboxings, for cooking episodes that are coming up, I haven't forgot about Warcraft cooking. Trust me, I got some big plans for Warcraft cooking. So stay tuned until next time. Ciao.